Oh, hello there. This is Old Guy with a Wrench coming at you with another video. Today we're not going to be working on how to install a circuit breaker into your fuse box, but we are going to be working on something that does involve electricity. So let me cut this last wire and let's get her done. Today we're going to be working on why my lights are not so bright and why every time I turn on my LED lights my instrument panel dims and it flickers. As you can see we got all the lights on right now. And my rear light's not even on at all. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and address that, figure this out. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is disconnect the battery cables, clean the posts, clean inside the battery cable connectors, put it back on. I got the connectors off. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use sandpaper uh, to take care of this problem. Uh, you wanna get yourself a little multimeter I normally turn it on to VDC and I put it at 20. Uh, first thing you want to do is put the red to the red, which is positive, and the black to the negative, and see the reading. Uh, I don't know if you could see from there, but I got 12.66. It flickers to 12.67. Okay, I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm going to go ahead and test the battery real, real quick. Uh, we have the vehicle on. See what kind of bolts we're getting out of the battery. Okay, well, if you can see on there, I'm getting uh, 14.60. Okay, I just went ahead and turned on the headlights and the LED lights. Basically, everything is on to include the radio also have one of those uh, backup mirrors installed in this vehicle so we're gonna go ahead and check the voltage to the battery and see what it's putting out as you can see with everything on i'm pushing 11.99 so basically that's a big drop from 14.60 when all my lights are on. What I'm gonna do is swap out the alternator that came with the 1.6 16 valve engine uh, for Suzuki Sidekicks. And I'm gonna go ahead and throw this uh, Delco 10 SI one wire install 63 amp alternator that's normally found in old Chevys and GMCs. Hopefully this will rectify the problems uh, with low voltage and the issue with my uh, with everything dimming out first thing you want to do when working with any electricals is you want to disconnect your battery in order to avoid any issues with getting shocked as you can see there's a whole lot of things going on here not a whole lot of room to work uh, basically what you want to do so i'm going to go ahead and explain this real quick so like that I could just go ahead and use both hands and I hold the camera while I'm doing this. What you want to do is loosen this bolt here so you can loosen your belt, uh, remove the belt. Uh, you got this uh, thermostat right here. Take that out of the way so you can have room to work. Back here, I don't know if you can see my fingers touching it. You got the alternator connector. Uh, you want to go ahead and remove that and hopefully you should be able to get this uh, bracket loose and then go ahead and get this nut out so you get this bracket loose and remove the old alternator completely out of the vehicle there's another cable wire connected to this alternator back here I don't know if you can see my finger moving around 
uh, this was going to be tough to get from here so in order for you to avoid a headache of getting annoyed with this project just trace the wire back to its connector and uh, disconnect it from here and you should be fine with all the wiring to this alternator Hopefully you can see the bracket down there uh, that I installed for the new alternator. Uh, you got the front nut and the two bolts that go in, inside the bracket itself. I should be able to pop this alternator in there now. As you can see, I kind of did a little bend there. I'm going to go ahead and test fit this real quick. I finally got the bracket in there. As you can see, uh, it's holding the new uh, GM uh, alternator in there just fine with that notch there. So what I'm going to do next is uh, get me a piece of uh, probably 3 16 steel plate. Cut a little piece and weld it into there so I can have some support. And this alternator should be ready to go. This is what it looks like once you fill in this gap. I actually got a new welder installed a 240 outlet in my garage. And I'm going to be honest, I should have done this years ago because I was able to put this plate, this little piece of metal, into this bracket with ease. I mean, it pretty much blasted through it, and the penetration in the metal was awesome. Okay, we're going to do a quick tip. On how to put a big terminal into a large uh, wire now basically what you do is you get yourself some left free solder you stick it in here use a torch liquefy the solder and then once you liquefy the solder you stick the wire in there hold it in there for a while and it will stay in place you want to do this because you're going to put it in an area where if you just stick it in there you know pinch it and use black tape it's probably going to come apart on you so you want to make sure that these kind of terminals are on the wire properly so you don't have to deal with it later on as you can see I finally got the terminals connected to the wire I believe this is a gauge uh, this is the 80 amp fuse housing with the 80 amp fuse inside of it. Uh, I try to make it as neat as I could. It just doesn't look like a tape job. I don't know if I said earlier, but you want the short end connected to the solenoid by the starter. And then you want the long end that's running under the heater hose or the water hose that's on your engine. Uh, this end goes into the alternator. Uh, basically, hopefully by running this, you have enough power to run all your accessories in your vehicle. Okay, let's do a quick review. I'm going to put a quick diagram up here of what I got installed into the Suzuki Samurai.
lost me inside of me You better watch out if you ignite him He's a road ahead of full prophecy To be the greatest beast the world has ever seen I feed him every day like the bones clean I feed him all the hate and he grows me And he gets caught real big pissed off quick And if you cross him you might drop dead Metaphorically of course settling this or Never getting bored loves the blood and gore I'm Always wanting more freedom from the source They don't really understand until they feel the force apart And if you start shit you'll be heartless in the darkness Torn apart quick you left stars ripped you'll be chewed up and discarded Okay, I hope you can see this diagram from where you at. Pretty self-explanatory. We got a battery here. We got a starter. And we got the GM alternator. We also have the uh, supply adapter that comes with the GM alternator in order for you to connect to the stock wiring that's in your Samurai. The only way this is gonna work is for the 1.6 liter 16 valve Suzuki Psychic upgrade that you're going to put into a Samurai. It's not going to work for the 1.3. There might be some diagrams online that will show you this, but I'm going to go and show you why this doesn't work for the 1.6 16 valve. All right, if you connect the supply adapter that's coming from the GM alternator into your stock wiring which is a white with red stripe and a black with white stripe connected to a green connector that's inside your engine compartment the problem you're going to run into is that if you connect these two wires to these two wires your fuel pump will run continuously even if the vehicle is off in order to avoid that problem you want to go ahead and disconnect the black wire with white stripe in it once you disconnect that wire you're going to be left with the white with red stripe and the white wire that comes out of the supply adapter you can run this system here but now you have another problem you have all your accessories on all your lights on you're happy everything's working car sounds great and you go to turn it off when you turn it off you're going to have this light come on. Your battery light. So now you turn everything off and now your battery light comes on on your dash. This light will stay on continuously while the vehicle is off. In order to solve that problem, you just go ahead and get rid of the supply adapter wiring that goes into your green plug in your Samurai. Once you take care of this right here, no more dummy light, no more issues with your fuel pump, your vehicle will run just fine. All the lights will work, turn signals, accessories, winch, fog lights, stereo, and you could get away with running this, but like I said, only for the 1.6 liter 16 valve psychic engine that's now in your samurai this right here will work with the gm alternator if this is too much for you it's okay to take it to a professional and let them do it for you there's no need for you to try to do something like this and have your vehicle catch on fire normally about this time you'll be seeing me hit the trails showing you that everything works with my new alternator but unfortunately my samurai decided to go another route let me show you what I mean I don't know if you can see that but that's a leak an antifreeze leak it is not a hose either it's the water pump so normally while I'm telling you Something along the lines about figuring out my next move. But I already know what my next move is going to be. It's fixing this water pump. And it's not a small task. But I'm going to try to keep it positive and get it done. But in the meantime, like always, keep wrenching. <laughs> 